So today we're going to be exploring the medieval town of Heimburg on der Donau, which is on the Austrian side of the Austro-Slovak border. But first, as always, we love hikes and we're going to take a hike over the three hills. The Hexenbergweg led the way to our first hill, the Hundesheimer Berg. The hill is part of the Devine Carpathians, which extends across the border to Slovakia, where the aptly named medieval Devine Castle also happens to be located. The nature walk and landscape views are what make this walk to its peak of 481 meters so special. Along the walk, one can also see various angles and perspectives of the medieval castle, the Heimenburg, that sits on top of what will be our second hill on this journey, the Schlossberg. So something that happens to go throughout the wild in Austria, and typically in spring, is this plant over here called Berlauch, which is basically wild garlic. From my personal point of view, and I suppose from the point of view of a gluttonous foodie such as myself, they smell and taste amazing and produce a palpable fragrance of fresh garlic in the air. But be very careful when attempting to handle one of these. They are very similar in appearance to the plant Lily of the Valley, which are highly toxic, and yes, they can be lethal so ensure to have your wits about you. Further on up towards the peak and traversing through even more natural beauty, we then get a clearer perspective of the surrounding area. So behind me you'll see the Donau River flowing from the direction of Vienna to Bratislava and further on into the background you'll see the floodplains of the Donau Au National Park. After taking some time to appreciate the surrounding landscape, and the hut at the top of the peak, we slowly began making our way to the second hill on our journey, the Schlossberg. As a huge history fan, particularly when it comes to medieval European history, visiting the ruins of the Heimenburg, sitting on top of the Schlossberg, was a real treat. While walking up the castle hill, visitors will immediately notice the remnants of the old city wall that once played a pivotal role in Heinburg's security. Nearer to the top of the Schlossberg, one may also get a view of the old town of Heinburg along with many of its historical relics. Sitting 290 meters high on top of the Schlossberg, the Heinburg complex today consists of an old courtyard, the chapel of St. Pancratius and the old residential tower. The castle was built in around the year 1050, during the reign of Emperor Heinrich III, and in the early 12th century, it became the possession of the Babenbergs, a noble dynasty of dukes and margraves that are considered to be the predecessors of the Habsburgs. The castle was further expanded during the late 12th century by using some of the ransom of Richard I of England, better known as Richard the Lionheart, who was taken prisoner in what is present-day Lower Austria due to perceived conspiracy. The castle was also the venue of the wedding between Ottokar II of Bohemia and Margaret of Austria in the year 1252. The latter was one of the last members of the original Babenberg dynasty. The castle became the property of the city of Heinburg in 1629 after having fell into deterioration since it had been taken over by the Habsburgs in the year 1278. However, the castle fell into complete ruin during the second invasion of the Ottoman Turks after they had stormed and devastated the city and its castle. According to tradition, 8,000 people among the city's subjects were said to have been killed during the siege. It wasn't until 1975 when citizens of Heinburg began to renovate the castle's ruins in order to keep the memory of their city's heritage alive. Okay, so just one more hill to go. So from the Schlossberg, we then began to make our way towards the Brownsberg Hill. But first, a little exploration of the old town itself. The old town of Heinburg is clearly rich in history, and nothing makes it more obvious than its preserved structures and architecture that indicates the epochs that had had a demonstrable influence on shaping the city's character. Elements of the medieval, renaissance and baroque periods are all very palpable in Heinburg's historical atmosphere as well as the city's 15 former towers, some of which can still be seen today, along the stretch of the remains of the 2.5 km long 13th century city wall, stand three of the city's well-preserved medieval gates. Right now we're standing in one of the largest existing medieval gates in Europe, the Venator, which is translated in English as the Viennese Gate or the Viennese Door. The first of these 13th century medieval gates that we will visit 
is one of the city's major landmarks built under the reign of Duke Friedrich II. It is also said that when Ottokar II of Bohemia came to Heinborg to marry his bride, Margaret of Austria, it was this very gate that he had passed through before reaching the castle on top of the Schlossberg. Built in the early half of the 13th century is the Ungator, translated as the Hungarian Gate, which is located in the east of the city, and this is possibly the oldest existing gate in Heinborg. Then there is the Fischer Tor, translated as Fisherman's Gate. This connected the city to the Danube Bank settlement that sat outside of the city wall. It was near here that tradesmen such as fishermen, tanners and millers used to be based. This was also the scene of tragedy during the Ottoman siege, when people that were running for their lives in panic blocked the inward opening of the gate, leading to many of them being killed or abducted by the Turks. A memorial to this tragic and gruesome event can be found on the adjacent Blutgasse today. Continuing on from the old town and walking beside the Danu River, we finally make our way to the third hill on the journey, the Brownsberg. To get there, however, we first needed to walk through part of the Donauau National Park. The National Park actually stretches 93 square kilometers all the way from Vienna to this area near the modern day border with Slovakia. But for this part of the river, a lot of clever engineering was contributed to create a constant flow of water in the main stream of the river between the 19th century and present day. So we're now in the Donauau National Park, which is most renowned for having maintained the natural floodplains of this area of the Danube River. By introducing flood protection structures and damming many of the tributaries, the river's mainstream deepened and the water began to flow at a more constant and higher velocity. This resulted in the development of a richer ecosystem, more specifically, a significant increase in animal and plant life for the area. As a result of this feat, the area was granted national park status in 1996. Along the way up, you will also get to pay a visit to the Rüthelstein Castle Ruins. During the Middle Ages, this castle along the Danube protected the city of Heinburg from the Kingdom of Hungary. Although there is a lack of reliable information regarding the origins of the castle, it is believed that it may have been built before the year 1170 and destroyed in the early part of the 15th century where it since remained as a ruin. Onwards towards the peak of Brownsberg at 346 meters, we came across fields of beautiful hilly meadows, luscious green forestry, and different perspectives of the Danube River from above. And I still got to appreciate every moment of it in spite of carrying a toddler on my back all the way up. From the peak of Mount Brownsburg, you get a perfect view of the town of Heinberg and the Slovak capital of Bratislava. What's also amazing about this place is that this was once the settlement of the ancient Celts. Archaeological evidence of early settlers have been discovered on this hill, which suggests that the ancient Celts and Illyrians very likely inhabited this area a long time before the Romans marched in. However, if you think this area's history stops there, you may be wrong. New and exciting evidence now seems to point to an even earlier settlement on Brownsburg. As evidence now suggests, the Urnfield culture, or even a peoples from the Hallstatt period, may once have resided on this ancient hill. And with that, we can conclude that the future may yet hold many more keys to Heinberg's fascinating past. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and subscribe to our channel.